Right, so taxing the rich, that's a good idea, isn't it? We like this idea. It's getting a lot of traction, a lot of conversation at the minute. Taxing the rich, well, taxes. Anyone disagree at this point, though? They're absolutely bogged down with money. They can fill swimming pools with the stuff if they wanted to. But if anyone has made the case for it in the last week, it's the permanently angry, shriveled walnut that is Alan Sugar. Stuff the Lord Sugar. Stuff the Sir Alan nonsense. The London wide boy made good and has spent much of his time as a billionaire since pulling the ladder up behind him. If there wasn't money in it for him making The Apprentice, for instance, you could be sure he wouldn't be doing it. Well, like so many inordinately wealthy people, he's tried to avoid paying tax, you see. That's just why he's in the news. This is why I'm drawing attention to this. He'd been off in Australia filming its version of Celebrity Apprentice, so Sugar tried arguing for non-residency here, effectively claiming he spends no more than 90 days a year here, having been in Australia for months on end, and all despite the fact he'd just drawn one of the biggest dividends in UK history from his business empire for himself, a dividend to the tune of £390 million. That's what he planned to pay himself just for the year 2020, 2021, I believe it was. He thought he could do that without paying any tax on it too, a tax figure that would have amounted to £186 million. I don't have to pay it, he said. I haven't been in Britain. Disregard the tax bill. Unfortunately for Sugar, he's not nearly as clever as he thinks he is. All those times he snarled at someone for not calling him Lord Sugar as that's come back to bite him. It's a little bit of karma over this because that seat of his in the House of Lords that he's so fond of, so fond of pointing to in his title that he rarely ever parks his posterior in, nonetheless, has become his undoing, you see. Because if you've accepted a seat in the House of Lords, you are a de facto British, res British resident at all times. So nice try, Alan. Pay your damn tax bill. Well, as you can imagine, he will have had one of his little tantrums, stamping his tiny feet, screaming, if I'd known that, I would have quit the House of Lords. Well, so much for how big of a deal it is for you to be called Lord Sugar then, eh? Seems that that has a, a price tag on it too. An honour, a peerage, all secondary to his own greed, apparently. Even paying the bill leaves him with £204 million full of a year to live on. So what planet is he on that that's not enough? Andrew Pearce recently attacked benefits claimants for the hundreds of hospitals that could be built if the government decided to strip them of cash they need just to survive on. But a rich twerp like Sugar, oh, that'll be fine. Let him keep his money. That's more cash than we'll ever see in our lifetimes. It's just one year's dividend for Sugar. He'll be taking millions again next time. You can bet he won't be building any hospitals with it, though. Look at it another way. Alan Sugar said several years ago that if Jeremy Corbyn ever became Prime Minister, he'd leave the country, and now he's trying to claim he had left under a Tory one in order to avoid paying his taxes. The calls for a wealth tax are just mounting up and up, and they are more than justified in which case. That's why Sugar was terrified of Corbyn. He spent years attacking him on social media and attacking anyone who called him out for it because he was scared. Ultimately, the man's greed is so preposterous, he was literally afraid of a wealth tax. Sugar is worth £1.2 billion already. He couldn't spend that in a lifetime, in several lifetimes. And he's in his late 70s now. So how much more lifetime has he got? It's greed for greed's sake. But a 1% wealth tax on wealth above £10 million, which is one wealth tax proposal that was going around, it was the most modest one. So very rich people would raise £10 billion for the Treasury. And for Alan Sugar, a 1% tax on £1.19 billion, that's his £1.2 billion minus £10 million, would land him with a tax bill of just £11.9 million. I say just £11.9 million, but when he's worth £1.2 billion, that's not a lot, is it? He'd still have nigh on £1.19 billion of his own, in which case. It's so little that when you, you, you go to a couple of decimal places, the amount of money he's paying up just simply vanishes. Such a small fraction of his wealth, they wouldn't touch the sides. He'd probably more than make it back in a year. Yet for years, he's wailed about it like a spoiled child. Now he's moaning about having to pay tax under the Tories because he thought he was being clever and getting away with it and avoiding paying such tax. Perhaps he wouldn't have taken such a large dividend if he thought he would have to pay tax on it. Did he just take it out to show off? Do you take that much money out of your business just to say, look at me, aren't I big, aren't I clever, haven't I got lots of money? Is that what gets you off these days? Is this the only reason you have so much money? Willy-waving contest to other rich people. I really can't think of another reason for it because you can't bloody spend it all. Whatever the reason, it's clearly never enough when you can be that rich and still complain about having to pay your way. He's made these arguments before. He argues he's this wealth creator. And if you tax them too much, they'll run away. Well, you ran away to Australia any, anyway, Alan. 
And if you hadn't, they'd have got somebody else over there, wouldn't they? If you were to sort off from the UK, you wouldn't be missed for one, and your business interests would soon be taken by others. Hopefully others who would do a damn sight less whinging than you do over having to pay your taxes, even when you could afford to pay large sums and still be ridiculously rich. The more you earn, the more you can pay. And frankly, when you know that contributes to the running of society, that should be a source of pride for you. I can afford to pay more than other people. Why is that not what gets you off? But you don't care about such things, do you, Alan? You don't care about public services being funded. You don't care about society struggling. You don't care about people struggling because you used to be the equivalent of Del Boy Trotter. And look where you are now. Aren't I big? Aren't I clever? Haven't I been a wonderfully successful businessman? Yes, you have. But you think that if you can do it, anyone can. Trouble is, you missed the point that if everyone did it, nobody would be rich. And what would you do then for an ego trip? Society doesn't work that way. If it did, you wouldn't get away with making crap TV like The Apprentice, for starters. Pay your share on what you make. The more you make, good for you, but the more tax you can afford to pay in turn. That doesn't happen in our society. It'll certainly never happen when you have people on the Sunday Times rich list literally running the country. Not that anyone elected Sunak to do that anyway, either. Should Sugar be fined for this, do you think? Should he be punished in some way? He probably won't. He'll pay his tax, grumbling all the while, I'm sure. The embarrassment of being caught out, though, is something he shouldn't be allowed to ever forget. The man could do with more lessons in humility, in my opinion. But if you dare accidentally claim too much money topping up your wages, as we often see happen all the time with universal credit claimants, not necessarily the fault of the claimant at all, because the system is rubbish, you can bet the government will chase you down for that. The rich are revered and the poor are despised. And Alan Sugar's attitude exemplifies that completely. His conduct is absolutely shameless. He's another reminder why the Lords need abolishing, because apart from anything else, this man with his attitudes, when he bothers to turn up, is in a position to make and shape laws in this country. And you can bet he only does so in his own interests, when it suits him, because I honestly do not think he cares about anyone or anything else at all, when his greed appears to be all-consuming, as his complaints, in my view, clearly show. I can't believe you think about anything else. To some extent, I pity him. How empty must you be when you get like that? The grifters and sponges in this country are not the sick, the disabled, the out of work, the refugees, the asylum seekers. It's people with so much money, they end up in positions where they can get away with trying to deny paying their fair share, though, when we all have to do that. Next time another Andrew Pierce pops up shouting about shirkers, the first people you should think of are tax avoiders and tax evaders because they're taking far more cash out of the nation's coffers and the public purse than anyone else. What do you think, though? Is Sugar entitled to keep his cash of a broad, or is he every bit the living embodiment of Ebenezer Scrooge here? How do we flip this narrative of shirkers onto the rich not paying taxes, and off those with the least, most often being exploited themselves, to make other people richer? Add your thoughts to the comments, be part of the conversation on this. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share, and subscribe if you did more content out daily. Meanwhile, here's a video where Rishi Sunak has been helping the wealth divide to prosper, not close, as two-thirds of all new wealth last year apparently went to the richest 1%, the likes of Alan Sugar. So, fat chance of getting on top of that with this sorry bunch, is there? I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.